What's going on, everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you the history and legacy of the Infinity Engine. I just recently got done reviewing all of the Infinity Engine games, as this channel focuses primarily on CRPGs, so I thought it would be fun to talk about the Infinity Engine by itself, as it plays a very important role in CRPGs in that it is, to this day, inspiring these RPGs that are being made now. But before we talk about the Infinity Engine, I think it's best to actually talk about another engine known as the Gold Box Engine. Now, the Gold Box Engine is one of the first to ever use D&D as a property. While the Gold Box Engine itself does actually have a pretty interesting history all its own, the main thing to keep in mind here for this conversation is that the Infinity Engine was inspired by the Gold Box Engine. But like many things in life, the newer, refined version, being the Infinity Engine, overshadowed its predecessor, which is actually relatively common, especially in the business world, and my favorite example of this is Oreo and Hydrox. Before Oreo, there was a cookie called Hydrox, and then Oreo made almost exactly the same thing, but slightly better, and it took off like wildfire. But oftentimes, the initial entry into something new isn't as popular as what's to come. Which brings us to the Infinity Engine itself. It was originally developed by BioWare when they were trying to develop a game they were calling Battleground Infinity, hence the Infinity Engine. However, this game eventually became Baldur's Gate 1. Now, what's especially remarkable about that is that the Infinity Engine was being developed alongside of Baldur's Gate 1. They were making the game and the engine kind of at the same time. So the fact that not only did that work out and Baldur's Gate 1 went on to have this huge success, I think is incredibly noteworthy. But before we dive too deep into that, let's talk about what a game engine even is. Now, we'll keep this relatively simple, but essentially what a game engine actually functionally is, is merely a suite of software. And while here in the modern era, typically speaking, what companies will do is rather than develop an engine, which they then have to update and maintain, they'll license an engine to use, such as Unity, Unreal Engine, that type of thing. Well, back in the 90s, that didn't really exist. It wasn't a possibility at the time. And thus, a lot of these companies would make their own proprietary engine, which is how the Infinity Engine came about, and why they were developing it in the first place. But, as I mentioned, BioWare did not originally create this engine with the intent of using it for party-based isometric RPGs. That was actually an idea by Interplay Entertainment, who would publish the early games from BioWare. And when BioWare presented Interplay with Battleground Infinity, it was Interplay who said this would actually be very well suited to Dungeons & Dragons style games, which they had just recently acquired the license to actually use. And it's thanks to its use in those games that the Infinity Engine has become such an iconic thing, as it is the type of engine that the second you see a game made with it, you pretty much immediately know. But some of the hallmarks are, of course, the party-based real-time with pause combat, as well as the pre-rendered backgrounds with the sprite-based characters. In fact, this format is so well recognized that even to this day, oftentimes you will see CRPGs replicate this almost exact formula, or at least general visual presentation, as these days we don't really see pre-rendered backgrounds anymore. But the Infinity Engine was ultimately used to produce five different games across four years, from 1998 to 2002. Those five games being Baldur's Gate 1, Planescape Torment, Icewind Dale, Baldur's Gate 2, and Icewind Dale 2, all in chronological order of release there. And while we're not talking about these games individually, I do have reviews for them if you're interested in checking them out. But another interesting tidbit about the Infinity Engine is that... The details of it are, even to this day, a little bit scarce. They've never been really publicly published anywhere. However, a lot of fan mods and that kind of thing have reverse engineered the engine, basically, which has given us all sorts of publicly available modding tools, that type of thing which people use to make mods for these games even today. And then, of course, we have the enhanced editions. If you're unaware, four of the five Infinity Engine games have received an enhanced edition, which were essentially updates to the games themselves to make them more playable in today's age. 
Now this is interesting because Beamdog, the company behind these enhanced editions, actually used a sort of updated version of the Infinity Engine that they called the Infinity Plus Edition, I believe. Which I point out because I find it interesting that even today, improvements were able to be made to that engine to then release a more modernized product, even when using tools that old, which I thought was pretty cool. But let's talk a little bit about the legacy of the engine itself. So as I mentioned, the engine engine itself was in development at the same time as Baldur's Gate 1, and as such, what they did with that first game was a little bit limited. And that's why subsequent games like Baldur's Gate 2 managed to do more things overall as well as have more complicated map setups because the engine was complete and that way they could focus on the game development itself. Though interestingly enough, while the engine was only really used for four years of game development, by as early as 2000 it was already being called dated when the industry was kind of moving towards the initial 3D graphics push, which is just kind of a funny thing because when you read about these games in this engine, you'll hear all about how it was considered dated when these games would launch, but honestly, the pre-rendered background still looked a lot better than the very early clunky 3D graphics that other games that were praised for graphics would get. So just kind of a funny little tidbit of history there for you. But by the time 2002 rolls around and we're looking at Icewind Dale 2, I think it is kind of unquestionable questionably an aging engine overall, and this is because Icewind Dale 2 attempted to use the third edition rule set of Dungeons and Dragons, whereas the previous games had used advanced Dungeons and Dragons. And that's important because the Infinity Engine was made with advanced Dungeons and Dragons in mind, and with the later rule sets of third edition, the engine couldn't keep up with all of the new rules, and thus some of them just had to be straight up cut. Which brings us to the more modern influences of the engine. While the engine itself is dated and doesn't exactly work with modern types of RPGs, of course, it nonetheless is the inspiration for many modern CRPGs and RPGs in general. In fact, to this day, most isometric CRPGs almost always recreate the basic gameplay of the Infinity Engine, albeit typically with more 3D-focused graphics. And I think the true legacy of the engine, when you look at it that way, is that it cemented this genre, that is to say isometric CRPGs. In fact, even more third-person CRPGs, if you will, such as Dragon Age, drew heavy inspiration from this particular series of games and the engine itself. Because while the Gold Box engine certainly did a lot of this kind of stuff, it was the Infinity engine that fully realized the potential of party-based role-playing games, especially when it comes to adapting tabletop rule sets. Which is why we see so many RPGs, even in the modern day, basically just recreate that feel of these older games. And I think it's very impressive to see how much modern CRPGs have really pushed the idea of what is possible with this framework in terms of storytelling as well as mechanical encounters. But one thing's for sure either way, and that is the fact that the Infinity Engine has left a pretty significant mark on the history of video games because in many ways we can thank the Infinity Engine as well as the games that were made in that engine for a lot of the popular and beloved CRPGs of today. But that is all I've got for you guys, the history and legacy of the Infinity Engine. An incredibly interesting topic. By all means, let me know what you think of it down in the comment section below. But regardless of all that, truly, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.